Hey guys! So in today's video, we're going to be comparing 1995 Persuasion versus the 2007 version of Persuasion. Yeah! So these are both film versions, so they're not miniseries. Though I do think Persuasion needs its own miniseries needs more time on screen just because it's awesome. So my name is Ellie Dashwood and this is my channel where we talk about history and literature. If you like either of those things, please subscribe and also let me know in the comments down below what is your favorite version of Persuasion? Also just a disclaimer, I'm going to be probably doing spoilers of Persuasion, both the movies and the books throughout this whole thing. So if you don't want Persuasion spoiled for you, probably don't watch this video. I'm sorry, I, it's been brought to my attention. Sometimes I assume everybody knows how Jane Austen's books end. I feel like they're so famous, the people know, but alas, not everybody knows, I guess. It's Persuasion spoilers. Today we're going to be talking about the overall film, also the storytelling and different changes they made in these adaptations and all of that. So first up, let's just talk about the films in general with their overall aesthetic and appeal. So I feel like the 1995 version is very 1995. It has the same exact look as 1995 Pride and Prejudice, as the 90s Sense and Sensibility, as the 90s Emma. I feel like everything that came out in the 90s just looked kind of the same. And there we have Persuasion 1995. I have to say the 2007 version is just very, very specifically aesthetic to something. I don't know what. It has a high grain ISO, so everything's very grainy. A lot of stuff is very dark. Everything is like super color graded to give it this very specific look. Not not only that, but they were doing a handheld shaky camera thing throughout the entire film that I'm like, somebody just get these people a tripod and also super zoomed in. I feel like half the shots are like this zoomed in and then they're also shaky. I don't know who thought that was a good idea, but alas, I do think that it might have something to do with their interpretation and the way they're portraying persuasion, but I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit. So overall, I don't think either film is actually winning it when it comes to like overall, I don't know, prettiness level? Neither of them are the prettiest film I've ever seen made. When it comes to the casting of the films, I feel like neither of them are cast in a way that was, of course, as seen in my head because of what film is, but I have to say that I'm not a super big fan of either of their casting. I think the Wentworth of 2007 is more believable than the Wentworth of 1995. I know so many of you guys out there love 1995's Wentworth, but this is, I think, the biggest issue I had with the guy they cast in 1995, which is he looks old enough to be Henrietta and Louise's father. And I'm just like, this is so awkward when you have these really young teenage girls running after this guy who looks old enough to be their dad. This isn't super believable. What, what's causing this? Are they that man starved out there in the country that they're like, yeah, it's time to hit on this guy who could be my dad. Anyway, so I mean, there's that problem in the 1995 persuasion. Meanwhile, I feel like the Wentworth in 2007 is much more believable for these teenage girls to be going after. As for Anne Elliot, I feel like both actresses did a good job. I don't think either of them are the Anne of my imagination, though I have to say in 2007, what is going on with her hair? Like it's the weirdest bangs ever. They don't look good on her and they could have went with other Regency styles and they didn't. And I'm like, were they trying to make her look bad? I do know that there's this underlying theme of Anne Elliot's appearance changing throughout the book where she sort of wilted in the beginning of the book and then she comes back into her beauty by the end of the book. However, I don't think that any of that had to do with her bangs and her bangs don't get better throughout the whole show. So I feel like they could have done something else with her hair that could have either added to this beauty transformation storyline or could have just looked better or different. Because when reviewing a film, you definitely need to review Anne Elliot's bangs. Now I'm gonna talk about the different ways they approach telling the story of persuasion. And I have to say it's super interesting because I think there we see this huge divergence in where they're coming from. I think 1995 does a really good 
job of sticking to the book up to the point where they go to Bath. After that, it seems to go rogue. What's really interesting about 95 is they try to keep a lot of the original dialogue as it is in the book. While that's obviously a great attempt in honor of Jane Austen, persuasion the story is not told a lot through its dialogue, is told a lot through Anne's feelings and thoughts that we get from the narrator. And so I think trying to tell the story visually and through dialogue leaves so much of persuasion out. And the dialogue by itself, unsupported by Anne Elliot's inner world, is very hard to follow, which made the 1995 version a hard to follow film if you had never read the book before. Meanwhile, if we look at 2007, they changed a lot of the dialogue, they simplified a lot of stuff, and more importantly, they took basic story plot lines and they put it in the dialogue in a very simplified way. They would always be like, here's currently what's happening, here's what happened, Here's what's gonna happen next, very explicitly in the dialogue, but they made it seem like it's flowing naturally. And I feel like that ultimately did a better job of telling the actual story Story. I feel like if I had watched the 2007 version of Persuasion and had never read the book, I would understand what was going on just because they did a good job of storytelling and letting the film stand on its own. Meanwhile, of course, the 2007 version often moves dialogue around, like very famous quotes are being put into different characters' mouths in a different scene, which all of this comes down to something very important that I think 2007 did, which 1995 didn't, which I think 2007 Seven did an amazing job of capturing the spirit and the essence of persuasion, the book, versus perhaps sticking to the dialogue line by line. Now here is why. I feel like 1995 version is as if we were somebody in the room or we were an acquaintance of Anne Elliot watching Anne Elliot from the outside. We could catch a very subtle hints of her inner emotion. We could see the events that go down in front of everybody. Just sort of watch Anne. Well, I feel like in 2007, because we have Anne writing in her journal, we have a lot of voiceovers of what she is thinking. We see her physical tears. It's more like being Anne Elliot. We understand her inner world. We're let in on the deeper side of her existence and her part of a story that's going down. I did completely reread Persuasion before making this review, which is, I feel like that's what we see in the book. We see Anne Elliot's inner world explored throughout the book. And to try to make a film that completely leaves out that inner world is leaving out one of the hugest aspects of persuasion. So basically we get Anne's inner world in 2007 and I feel like that explains some of the stylistic choices like these shaky camera work and the very cropped in visuals because I think they were trying to create sort of this unsteady, super, almost overwhelming sometimes, a sense that might have been how Anne Elliot felt while going through these situations. Both stories also sort of follow the book mostly until they get to Bath. And it's like once you're in Bath in Persuasion, you can do whatever you want if you're a movie maker. You can be like, I'm just changing the whole plot line now. And here's a few examples of that. How Mr. Elliot is approached is different in both films. I think in 1995 where they say Mr. Elliot is actually poor when that is the opposite of the problem in the book. It's very misleading. I think it undercuts the whole plot line of Mr. Elliot. Mr. Elliot in the book is rich. He's just totally has a black heart and a scheming. And I think that is cast aside in order for this much more simple and easy to understand plot line of, oh, he lost all his money. Meanwhile, in 2007, they completely simplify Mrs. Smith's whole situation. We see her literally running after Anne, which she's supposed to not be able to walk, but they also completely cut out her entire backstory with Mr. Elliot. But at least Mr. Elliot's main motivations remain the same. Something super interesting about both versions is the fact that they include the alternate ending to Persuasion. So if you're watching Persuasion, there's the scene where Anne ends up talking to Wentworth and Wentworth is like, my brother-in-law and sister are willing to give up Pellinch if you and Mr. Elliot, after you're married, wanna live there. And she's like, who told you that? We're not engaged. And Captain Wentworth's like, oh, 
she's not engaged, maybe I have a chance. Anyway, that scene in both films is not in the final version of Persuasion, it's actually the alternate ending to Persuasion. So the very first ending Jane Austen wrote to the book was the scene where Anne ends up having this conversation with Wentworth. Yeah, like if her and Mr. Elliot are gonna move to Kellynch after they're married and she's like, we're not getting married. And he's like, really? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, great, you wanna marry me? And she's like, okay, in the book. And so that's the original ending to Persuasion, but apparently Jane Austen was unhappy with this ending. And so she scrapped it and she wrote the current ending we have where he writes that dramatic letter and all of the great romance at the end of Persuasion happens. Anyway, I think it's interesting that both film versions tried to incorporate that alternate ending into them, but I do feel like it doesn't really work. Because it was originally an end, it completely brings down any, I don't know, what is the word for this? Anne and Wentworth both have all of these feelings and emotions of like, do they like me? Is she really engaged to that guy? What's happening? And then they have this conversation and at that point, they both understand that they're neither engaged to anybody else and that they like each other. The end should naturally follow all of that emotional tension should be gone. And yet they try to keep it going after that scene. And so I do feel like, I'm sorry, but if you include the ending that kills the emotional tension, you can't have two endings. And yeah, I feel like it does, but this is just me rambling. Yeah. Now let's actually talk about the endings of Persuasion. Both of these have been criticized for valid reasons. Okay, so let's start with 2007, which we just see Anne Elliot running through the streets of Bath with no bonnet on. She's just going for it. Which, you know, how much decorum there is in this is questionable. I do feel like, again, they're trying to go with that angle of this is Anne Elliot's inner world. This is how she feels while she's trying to find Wentworth. She's just running around out of breath in her own heart and head, and they're just visualizing that to us through having her actually do it. And the other thing about this ending is then when she eventually does find Wentworth, they kiss. Eventually, it is the most dramatic, almost kissing moment I think I've ever seen. Like literally, it lasts forever. Okay, so here's the thing. I used to be a wedding photographer, which is super random, I know. Actually, in wedding photography, one of the most romantic poses you can do is not the kissing pose, it's the almost kissing pose because it does create this emotional tension of where when you see two people almost kissing, you're like, are they gonna kiss? Are they really gonna kiss? Do you think they're gonna kiss? And that is one of the reasons the almost kissing pose in wedding photography is quite popular because it's a image that's both romantic and it does carry this romantic tension within it. But there's a limit to it, right? In the film, it's like, okay, a little bit almost kissing is all right, but how long can you almost kiss? They took a good thing and they just took it way too far. Meanwhile, let's talk about the ending of the 1995 version. Now this one always has me so confused because out of nowhere, there is a street circus. The street circus is not in the book. I specifically looked for a street circus in the book. It's not there. But for some reason, when finally Anne Elliot and Captain Wentworth are going to get together, they're going to kiss in an appropriate amount of time. There's no extended almost kissing in this version at least. But there's just a random circus that everybody's standing there staring at. So if I was literary analysis Ellie right now, I would say that the circus was a physical representation of their exuberant love for each other upon their reunification. Really, the filmmaker was trying to portray their inner sense and emotions by having this happy and joyous circus go down the street around them. I do have to say this though. If I'm ever in Anne Elliot's position and I'm reuniting with my long lost true love and we're about to kiss, I genuinely hope whatever I'm feeling inside has nothing to do with random circus performers. I like the circus as much as anybody else. However, I find absolutely nothing romantic about it. Why is that the representation of their true love? being reunited. I don't know. It's not romantic. I understand now why usually people are like, oh, us kissing was like fireworks going off. That's such a more romantic visual than random circus people going down the street. That's the only possible explanation I can come up 
with for why there's a circus, the end of Persuasion, 1995 version. But of course we know that the true end to 1995 Persuasion is Anne Elliot sailing off with Captain Wentworth when of course he has to go back to war because Napoleon escapes. Napoleon just ruins everybody's life back in the day. He ruins Anne Elliot's honeymoon. He ruins, I don't know what else he ruins. He ruins the French countryside with random dead soldiers. So obviously that ending is not in the book, but I do feel like there's a lot of foreshadowment that I gave them artistic license to go there, I think, with her earlier conversation with Mrs. Croft about her being on the ship. However, it's not in the book. My personal opinion is I would love my husband back then, but I would not love him enough to live on one of those ships back in the day. I'm sorry, but no, it's just, that's not gonna happen. And this is why I end up married to Mr. Darcy and not Captain Wentworth. Because guys, life on Navy ships at the time was incredibly hard. It was incredibly brutal. I would not want to be stuck on a ship of very ill soldiers where one of them is being flogged to death, right? I mean, that is not a fun experience. I'm just throwing that out there. Meanwhile, the end of 2007 Persuasion also goes rogue, has Captain Wentworth buying Kellynch for his wife as a wedding present, which I've already gone into in a separate video of is that even legally possible, which at the time it wasn't. But yeah, again, so that didn't happen. But I think it was a sweet and romantic ending to the movie, if completely not possible <laughs> and preferable to being on a ship of disease and flogging. So basically, just to sum all of this up, I don't think either Persuasion fully captures the greatness of the book, but they both have their own strengths and weaknesses. For example, I think 1995 does a great job of capturing Persuasion if you want to watch Anne from the outside and see only subtle hints of her inner emotions until a circus breaks out. And that's the ultimate imagery of love right there. Meanwhile, 2000. Seven, I think, does a great job of capturing that inner world of Anne Elliot that we have access to throughout the entire book. And if you think the ultimate romantic look is almost kissing forever, 2007's got you covered. Anyway, let me know in the comments below what is your favorite version of Persuasion and are you looking forward to these new adaptations I've heard are coming out? I really hope they come out. Every once in a while I'll hear of an adaptation coming out and I'll be all excited and then it never comes out. So we will see if these really come out. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and keep being awesome because you're awesome. Bye.